What's going on, Island Hoppers? Today we are coming to you from Boston, Massachusetts, one of the oldest cities in all of the country located in New England in the northeastern part of the United States. In this Boston travel guide, we're gonna go all around the downtown Boston area and give you a pretty good idea of what to expect when you visit Bostonia. As you can see right here on this map, we've got North End Financial District. They've got South Boston Waterfront, which is a waterfront area you can walk around. They have the West End along the Charles River. I don't know if you guys can see this up close here. You have Paul Revere Park, so you have the USS Constitution, which is a museum, and then the wharf area right here. Right now, we are headed over towards the Tea Party Museum, which is actually right in this area right here. Boston is known as Bean Town because of the Boston baked beans, but it's also known for the Boston Tea Party, the Boston Marathon, and it's considered a global city, making it one of America's finest cities, oldest cities, and even one of the world's greatest cities. They have over 17 colleges that I know of right here in Boston area. Actually make that 35 colleges. That includes Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, Harvard, and even Cambridge. Just to name a few, don't forget Boston College. When you arrive on Amtrak, this one here called South Station is where you're going to pull up. Before that, there's one about two miles away called the Back Bay. Uh, this is South Station though. We actually arrived from New York City on the commuter train, on the regular train, not the Acela uh, high-speed train. It took about four hours to go from New York City to Philadelphia by train. It's pretty easy, uh, not, too, not too long. So it's just enough time to you know relax and then finally arrive in Boston. So South Station right here in the heart of downtown, that's where we arrived. And when it comes to the transportation in Boston, they do have several train lines, including the T, which will take you around different parts of Massachusetts. It's like the state's version of Amtrak. You go long distance on the T. They also have uh, local commuter trains, like you can see right here at South Station. Now, when it comes to the airport, you land at Logan, which is essentially right next to downtown. It's just on the other side of the harbor. So the transportation around here, from the pub public transport standpoint, is fairly decent. Now, when it comes to driving in Boston, it is considered probably one of the worst cities in America to drive in the inner city, in the city of Boston. Uh, stop and go traffic, very tight uh, roads with lots of congestion. Boston's not very good for driving, so keep that in mind. Here we are at the Boston Tea Party Museum. Behind me, you can see they have a boat that uh, imitates what it was like to actually throw the tea into the Boston Harbor here. At one point in the 1800s, this whole channel right here was filled with commercial ships with molasses and a variety of different imports and exports coming in and out of Boston Harbor right here. Nowadays, it's more placid and calm. Before, this would have been full of commercial boats in the day when the uh, tea party would have taken place.
1872, there was a great fire. A warehouse caught on fire, and the entire downtown Boston area went ablaze. You can see right here, it says 65 acres burned. This area that we're standing on where Boston Tea Party took place used to be known as Russia Wharf. You can see right here they had lots of trade in and out of Boston Harbor with the Russians, including barrels of rum, molasses, candles, goose quills, sugar. Lots of different trade took place right here in what used to be known as Russia Harbor. Russia Wharf. And right behind me, you can see the Intercontinental Hotel. And if you look that way, it overlooks the Boston Tea Party area here at Fort Point Channel. Now when you come to Boston, you're gonna to wanna to get some lobster from Maine. As you can see right here at the food truck, lobster rolls, lobster nachos, lobster fries, lots of different lobster you can get out here in Boston. So when it comes to the best time to visit uh, Boston, it's usually May until October. So the weather in the middle of summer can be fairly humid. Uh, right now it's May, it's breezy, it's chilly. Uh, right now brisk, 11 o'clock in the morning, about 72 degrees. Perfect in my opinion. I've been here in the summertime when it was humid, not so ideal. But uh, the best time of year is from May to October. Now, in the other months, the winter, it's gonna be cold here. So if you like cold weather, snow, come to Boston, because they do get that. From November until about March, cold weather. Here we are in front of the New England Aquarium. You can see uh, you get the city pass here for $64, $120 worth of value. New England Aquarium, Museum of Science, Franklin Park Zoo, Boston Harbor Cruises, Historic Cruise. If you come over here, you can see the pricing for the aquarium. Just the aquarium only, $32. Theater, $10. Whale watch combo, $82. And they also have a membership program. So if you guys wanted more information on this, you can look up the aquarium experience the New England Aquarium, 
neaq.org. Here at the Matthew and Marcia Simmons Theater, they're playing Great White Shark. Sounds interesting. Here at Long Wharf, you can get a boat that will take you out into Boston Harbor and tour you around. Several boats have already left just right out of Long Harbor right here. $45 for adults, seniors in military, $36.99, and children, $30. Here's a nice Irish pub called the Black Rose. You can get a Guinness beer here with fish and chips. Check it out. corner here of State Street and Congress is where the Boston Massacre took place. Look right over here, you can see. There's a tour happening right there. The area that we're at now is called Fenuel Hall. Right behind me is the Quincy Market. Let's go in here and take a look at this market. Look at what we have here, Larry Bird's shoes, Converse.
So as many of you already know, people in Boston and Massachusetts are not considered to be friendly. They're actually called mass holes. But my experience with the people here, all of them are really friendly. It's so crazy because you come here expecting a bunch of rude people and you get around and everyone's just really friendly, helpful, and easy going. But from what I understand is they are not nice to each other, but they're nice to tourists. That's what I've heard. All right, so in downtown Boston, they have this area called the North End. That's where we're gonna go. That's where Little Italy is. Boston was originally built on the Shawmut Peninsula, and it was actually a small island surrounded by the Boston Harbor area and the Charles River. What they ended up doing was filling in the land in the late 1800s and how do you know what's original Boston versus the landfill Boston with the dirt is because the area that has hills and slope and undulation is original Boston the area that's flat and actually on a grid with straight streets that's the new Boston area that's the areas that have been uh, landfilled so that's how you know Here we are in Paul Revere Square. If you guys pan this way, follow me over here. You can see the Paul Revere House Museum. So Paul Revere, this is where he was hanging out. This is where he's living in this area of North End Boston. And this is actually his house right here. So the north end of Boston has a lot of Italian restaurants and they say this is the best Italian food in all of America right here in the north end of Boston. All right, so being that we're here in Little Italy, we're gonna go get a cannoli, a nice dessert. Let's go. So what I got here is a chocolate dip cannoli shell with vanilla custard and pistachio toppings. I also got a to-go espresso.
thinking about getting a beard trim and a haircut. Let's see. Wait, wait, wait. Let me get this. Let me get this. All right, guys, if you look right behind me here, you can see several different historical relics. You have Bunker Hill, which was one of the deadliest battles in the Revolutionary War. The revolutionaries, the Americans, were outnumbered by the British, the Redcoats, about three to one. But that battle may have been won by the British, but it was the turning of the guard that eventually led to the revolutionaries being able to gain independence from Great Britain. If you look right over here, you see the USS Constitution and the USS Cassie and Young. That's a more modern ship than the Constitution. So if you come over here, just north of North End, you can see three different historical relics all side by side. Right now they're closed, but when you come here, you can see those and you can see uh, just what they look like. We're here at Acorn Street. This is one of the most photographed streets in all of America. I believe it's just behind Lombard Street in San Francisco, but you can see why. The community neighborhood that we're standing in is actually called Beacon Hill. That's where Acorn Street is, but you can see it's a really scenic, uh, historic neighborhood. This is a cool looking house, isn't it? With the vines growing up it.
If you look directly behind me, you can see the Massachusetts State House and the Gold Dome that gives it its signature look. Now, during one of the World Wars, they actually painted it uh, silver so that they couldn't see it. So it blended in with the city because they didn't want them to bomb the State House. If you look behind me, you can see a statue of Mary Dyer. She was actually hung here in Boston Common, just across the street, for fighting for religious freedom. She was a Quaker, by the way. If you look right behind me, you can see Emmett's, number one in Boston for Irish coffee. This here is off of Beacon Street. If you look right behind me here, you can see the Omni Parker House. That's the oldest hotel in America, right there. Here in Boston, there's several graveyards right in the middle of the city that have some of your most historical American celebrities, like Sam Adams, John Hancock. Let's go see if we can find out where they were laid to rest. Right here is King's Chapel. This green looking gravesite is actually Samuel Adams, one of the founding fathers, the place where he was laid to rest. The name of this graveyard is called Granary Graveyard. Just some people who were buried here, you could see John Hancock, Samuel Adams, Robert Tree Payne, Peter Faneuil from Faneuil Hall, Paul Revere, John Williams, and the parents of Benjamin Franklin. This right here is a look at the Declaration of Independence. It was read here to the people of Boston about 10 to 15 days after it was written, July 4th. On July, somewhere around the 16th or the 20th, somewhere in that time frame, they actually read this to the people of Boston here at Boston Commons. Someone correct me in the comments, please. And look who had the biggest signature, John Hancock. Put your John Hancock on it. We finally made it to Cheers. We're gonna go inside. Gotta wear a mask.
just like many other big cities in the United States, they have Chinatown. Here we are in Boston's Chinatown. We'll show you guys around this area and then we'll head over towards the Tea Party uh, Museum. In Chinatown, you get everything from a haircut to a body massage to dim sum restaurant, noodle shops, all up and down here. Boston's known for its medical uh, hospitals. This here is the number one children's hospital in all of America several years in a row. And the other adult hospital is also known as one of the top hospitals in all the world. So uh, Boston definitely knows medicine. <laughs> 